if you've updated the React query library from version 4 to version 5 in your React app, you might have noticed that your app has stopped working. And you will see this error in the browser console. Now, feel free to peruse this fine piece of literature at your convenience. I'm going to show you the likely culprit and how to go about fixing this quickly. So just to confirm here in my package.json file, I have installed the latest React Query package at the time of this recording, which is 5.12.2. So right off the bat, we will have to import two modules out of React Query, and that is Query Client Provider and Query Client. Truth be told, this, was, this process here was required in version 4, but it wasn't mandatory. Now in version 5, it is. Now you don't necessarily have to wrap your app in this sort of higher order component pattern here. Um, you can do it at the app level as well if you want, but in, to my mind, it makes more sense for me to do it here. So go ahead and declare a constant of query client, invoke a new instance of query client, wrap your app with the query client provider that we have imported up here, and then as a prop, as a client prop, pass in query client. Again, this was, this was actually required in, well, it wasn't required, it was recommended in version 4, but it wasn't required. Now in version 5, it is, uh, it is required, otherwise the app's going to break. Okay, let's drill down to the component level and see what has changed. So of course, we still have to do a destructure import as before. I'm only doing a fetch here. Of course, if you're doing mutations for uh, post, put, and delete, you have to import mutations. And so normally, uh, this component will live in its own folder structure. But for the sake of convenience and for time-saving purposes, I went ahead and uh, I've added this user's component at the app level for uh, convenience and for speed. So we have a function here called fetch users. It's an async await function to go out and fetch 10 users from this endpoint, standard JavaScript stuff. And then this component users uses this function like it did for the last four version of use query. Now this has changed. This will no longer work. Um, with version 5 of React Query, there are some improvements under the hood. And as a result, the programmer API has changed, which is to say the way that we use this library has changed very slightly. Uh, and it changes for all of the CRUD operations. For this example, I'm only doing the fetch or the get. So um, again, to, in order to save some time, I went ahead and I coded out the new approach offline so that we can move to this quickly. The pattern has changed, but it's not that far off. So I'm going, I'm going to comment out the old approach and paste in the new approach so that we can have a, a basis of comparison so that you guys can update your own code in your own repo. Okay. Um, we are still... Uh, restructuring out the useful module from use query. But whereas in the past, there were some convenient uh, static method under, sta under status. Now it's, it's at the top level. Okay, so as a result, we're going to do the, um, the uh, explicit checking uh, uh, at a high level instead of in the return as we did before in JSX. So if 
the promise is still pending. We're going to let the user know that in the um, UI, which makes sense because we are reacting to uh, data change and state change. And if there is an error, we are going to let the user know with a useful, uh, hopefully a user uh, help, a useful error message. Okay, we used to do that down here in JSX. Okay, let me again. I'm going to comment this out so that we can have a basis of comparison. Now, I think that this new approach, we can keep the JSX a lot cleaner than uh, more readable than before. Of course, you know, uh, that's debatable, but I'm just expressing my own opinion. Let me get rid of that extra line there. And so you guys can have a, let me get rid of that extra line as well so that you guys can do a comparison, a mental comparison. Okay. All right. Now let's see if this works. NPM run dev. Okay. Let me move this out of the way. Let me refresh this. And there is our user, our 10 users, rather. Let me go into, let me go into the network tab. I'm going to uh, do startling. Let's, oh, let's do slow 3Gs. Let's refresh this. So we can see, I want to see the message loading. Okay. And there's our 10 user. Remember that loading, that loading message, that's from here. Okay. On line 17. All right. Now let's, um, what I want to do is I want to block the request. Uh, to simulate things going wrong. Uh, let me see, block. Let's block everything from typo uh, and do a refresh. Okay. Loading. It's going to try uh, like three times. I have it on slow. Yeah, there we go. There's our error message. And there is a curve fill out to fetch. Okay. Again, that's from line 18. All right. Let's let's fix the. Uh, do, 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 excuse me. Okay. Let's no throttle. Let's not block that anymore. Okay. Get rid of that. Let's refresh to make sure everything's still working. Nope. And there it is. Okay, now I have a little bonus for you guys. Um, if you notice here in my dev dependencies, I have installed the 10 stack ESLint plugin query so that ESLint will tell us um, if there are any errors or warning inside of our uh, React query codes. Okay. Um, so go ahead and install this as a dev dependency. And then you should already have an ESLint file. Go ahead and add this line here. Now, this is what is recommended as a minimum from the uh, from Tanstack, the maker of uh, React query. Okay. Uh, so in the, in the extends array at this element here, and then for your rules, I have these. Now, of course, you can make, you can change the level to warn or error or whatever, you, you know, whatever makes sense for you. Uh, this will be very helpful, especially, at, this is a very trivial example, right? Let's be honest. This is very trivial. In the real life, in real life, it's going to be more complicated. It would help to have some warnings in there if, if you know if there's something wrong especially with a new technology it, well it's, it's a new version of a new technology right 
yeah there's some changes but you know if you look at this code it's actually still pretty you know we're not using use effect it's actually very little code to go out and fetch stuff before with the use effect use state and use effect is um very confusing even the even the even react the people who make react in documentation has stated that use effect is confusing and should be avoided there's a use case for use effect but certainly to fetch data we do not need to use effect anymore okay all right i hope you enjoyed the video uh if it's if it was beneficial please consider subscribing thank you so much see you next time